then you're going to find that like this screw, there's a post down there and the hole won't line up. Hey everyone, some uh, quick tips for working on these older iMacs. This is I think a 2011, but I don't remember. But all of these older iMacs are kind of built the same way. First of all, unplug the electricity, which you kind of can't see, but unplug the electricity because this right here, this is the power supply. And if, no, this is the power supply. If you, if you touch anything, see this big thunderbolt? This big thunderbolt right here means ow, 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 ow. So, unplug the AC power. Next, um, the hard drive, if you want to replace this with an SSD, what you need to do is you're obviously going to need to take this hard drive out and hook the SSD up here. But just in case you ever want to put a hard drive back in, you see you need to pop these two here and take this rail off the drive, you'll have extra bolts even if you put these rails back. Usually what I do with these iMacs, I'll pull the hard drive out and I'll literally tape the SSD to the back of the iMac because it frankly is just easier that way. Um, and then I'll also tape a tiny uh, Ziploc style baggie to the chassis in case anyone needs to use these little mount stud screws here to put it back together. Uh, that, that's for solid states, then you've got this temperature wire that a solid state won't take, and you'll have the fan racing. Keep in mind if you put in a hard drive that doesn't have the temperature sensor stuff, for Apple you will have to install something like SSD fan control, uh, something to control the fans um, so that you don't have the fans racing. Uh, now, the really bad part here, obviously the power supply is pretty simple. There's just some screws. This, this inverter board is simple. It's four screws. Um, but what I had to do, there's the airport card by the way, but what I had to do was remove this motherboard. And it's, it's no fun. Taking these apart is no fun. So, when you remove this motherboard, there are a lot of connectors. Right here, there's one here, there's a connector here, and there's an infrared receiver for the little remote down here that you actually have to pull up on. Um, two speaker wires here that are out of focus. Um, this is audio down here. You actually have to take the screws, the torque screws, everything's a torx, out for the audio and take this whole cable assembly out, I think, to make room for the thing to come out. But there's all these connectors. You do not have to take the fan out, but there's all these connectors that you have to make sure don't fall behind the board when you put it back. When you take this board out, in this case, I took it out to reflow this graphics chip, which is removable. You can actually replace these if, if you have a one of the less good ones. You can get upgrades for these sometimes. Um, but this heat sink assembly here, um, this whole assembly just comes out as one unit. Don't take these screws out if you're taking the motherboard out. Leave this here. Don't take it out. This, um, you can take the whole thing out as well, but you will have to take this one screw here. This one screw here needs to come out um, so that this will lift up. There are two screws here and kind of hidden under this cable here. There's one here and there's one here. There's a screw here, here, and there are a couple different kinds, so make sure that you can figure out what goes where. But the bottom line is pull all of these connectors. Don't unscrew all these things here. Um, you have to unscrew this and this. Actually, these two go all the way through. I want the arrow and the one on this end. Um, there also should be a screw up here that I have not put back yet that holds this end of the heat sink in. In fact, where is that screw? Uh, 
Uh, it's a good question. I'll figure it out later. But you might have to pop this one, you, but and you pop these two, and pop all of the screws that are very obviously going through the board. Get this audio cable out of your way, potentially. And then the whole board will pivot back and can be pulled up. Oh yeah, this IR receiver, you just literally like, you can get your fingers around it like that. And, and it'll just pull like right up out of that slot. Um, you kind of have to pry a little bit, but it will come up and you can just set that aside. So where, where you run into trouble is when you go to put it back. What I did was all these wires that are dangling right here, um, I put them into this horn on this little cooling fan for the hard drive. And by doing so, you kind of get them to stay out of the way while you put everything back together. This pulls up. This cable pulls up. And obviously it doesn't take much to pull it up. So just keep that in mind. It pulls up where these other ones have to be slid out by the notches. And that, that's basically it. Uh, once you get the motherboard, these through screws and all that and all these wires unplugged, you can just pivot it out and it'll pull up. But um, getting these heat sinks back together, if you take, especially this one, if you take these four screws out here, if you take these out, it's gonna be a bit of a pain to sandwich back together. And um, when you're putting it back together and you jam this board back in place, this, I don't know if you can see it, but, it's real important that this end over here, there's kind of a lip right here. It needs to fall into that lip. It needs to be flush. If it's up, when you've got this, all this stuff rebuilt and sandwiched together and you shove it in, then you're gonna find that like this screw, there's a post down there and the hole won't line up and things just won't go together. Um, anyway, that's basically the overall focus. That's the overall way that you deal with these iMacs from the early 2010s. I think this is a 2011. Um, make sure all the connectors go back because if you miss a connector it's not going to be good considering the screen has all these terrible torques and magnetics holding it in and it just you have to be careful. Take pictures along the way if you need to. Oh, and if you're wondering how I got it this far apart um, and you can't figure out where to begin, take the glass off the front with a suction cup. A big suction cup in the top center of the screen to pull it forward and then you can get your fingernails down in there and kind of slide it away. Once one magnet comes, the other should come pretty easy. Good luck with your iMac. You might need it. Take care.